We're all spending lots of time at home watching TV, making sourdough starters, doing some light math. Okay, maybe not so much the light math, but we have a lot more free time on our hands. And you know what they say about idle hands? Here's an idea. Why not keep yourself occupied with some entertainment provided by my friends, your friends, Adam and Eve? I've been a huge fan of them for years. They have thousands of unique product selections from vibrators to sexy toys to lube. Honestly, whatever your little at-home heart desires. As the folks at Adam and Eve say, the best part of staying at home is playing at home. I agree. And I know, too, sex toys are expensive. But I'll say this. Take advantage of all of this delicious free time by choosing almost any one item at 50% off. When you buy from Adam and Eve, you'll also get 10 free boredom-busting gifts, including six spicy movies, a three-piece bonus kit, free shipping delivered discreetly right to your door. I love it. Go to adamandeve.com and use the offer code TOWN to bring home unlimited fun. That's A-D-A-M-E-V-E dot com and use the offer code TOWN at checkout. A Historic Murder House Revisited. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. We are going to go back to where it all started at 2475 Glendower Place in Los Feliz, Los Angeles, the Los Feliz Murder House. Ooh. We did this in episode two because we were so excited to kick yes. things off. Oh, it was a different time back then. I was actively dating. We weren't in a pandemic or a social revolution, a political revolution. Oh, we had so much ahead of us. I, when I listened to some of the earlier episodes, oh, obviously- God. <laughs> you know, we didn't know what this was going to be or what... We were just kids. What people were going to like, yeah. It was 2018. It was Obama's administration. <laughs> I was in my late to early <laughs> mid-50s. And I was 16 years old. And that was weird. It was very weird. <laughs> it was weird. I was about to take my ACTs. And you know, I wanted to kind of go back to this because it has been a couple of years. Mm-hmm. There's new information. Mm-hmm. And I paid the house a little visit. Oh. And I had a very strange occurrence happen to me there, which I was not expecting because there's – some people talk about there maybe are possibly haunted aspects of, of well, anything. But I don't think it's it's noteworthy for that and nor did we ever kind of consider it noteworthy that it was – Haunted. I mean, no. creepy and with, you know, a lot of uh, yeah. dark history, but not particularly haunted. And I had a really strange situation <gasps> there. How come you are suddenly a receptor for haunted shit? Like, how does I have been waiting my whole life to be visited, and suddenly Jason willy nilly is being haunted here, haunted there, weird feelings here, strange apparitions there. What's have you like opened? Are you like meditating now or something? I no, when I was meditating, I had none of these issues. I think. I don't know. Maybe it's because I've, I've talked about it, and but I'm always have that shield of skepticism up, and I think that has, I don't know, if it was perpetuating it. But I had a very, mm. it, we'll call it coincidental, but call it strange. I took some video, and you can find the video in a video version of this episode that I did on my main channel, which is YouTube.com/slash Jason Horton. Kind of rebranding that, kind of just to keep it more ghost town esque or mm-hmm. stranger esque. So there's a link in the description. You can click on if you want to see the video of the house, but there's also going to be pictures that I took and something did not want me to take that video or <laughs> those photos. And I'll put it to you that way. I had a little run in with somebody. Whoa. And We'll talk about that a little later. We just want to lay the groundwork in case you're not familiar. In case you don't remember our mm-hmm. episode two in of case Ghost you're not Town. Familiar, I did go on a second date on Halloween to the Los Feliz Murder House. Um, I don't think that's neither here nor there anymore, but just to give you the background that you need. And I'm going to ask you about that, about how that <laughs> date, only because I, I remember when I first moved here, talk of this house yeah. because of the... Uh, kind of suspended in time aspect of it. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the the murder part is almost secondary to the uh, vacant and abandoned aspect of it, yes. I think. So it's just kind of a two-part story, I guess. Depends mm-hmm. on what you're more interested in, but I think they're both 
really interesting, but I'll get into that a little bit yeah. later because when I you know, first moved here, people talked about it. And I think we were like kind of driving up there, but I wasn't at that time. This is many years ago. And I was like, I don't really want to buy, I don't want to see any freaky stuff. To yeah. Be I just wasn't in, but I actually now went purposefully during the day, went back and it was strange. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Also want to mention really quick, our Patreon has some new tiers. We have a new governor. That's right. We have new bonus episodes. There's a bonus episode that's up right now. There's bonus episodes for one of the tiers for the Ghost Town Verses. <gasps> you get a little, the new Ghost Town Verses. How about that? And there's discount codes for the merchandise. And if you want to help support the show, uh, it really does help. We've we've really utilized it. Mm-hmm. It is patreon.com slash ghost town pod. And then that's it for that. <laughs> Let's move on to the episode. Don't want to upset Don't want to promote too much, but not too little either. No, not at all. Um, I do want to say, though, there's something particularly creepy about things preserved in time. And I would love to focus on that and, like, why the psychology of that more in, in a later episode. But, again, I think we've done something on the Alexandria Hotel. Um, just things where they are untouched by other by people like messed with like a time capsule, especially one that is a room and especially with the Los Feliz murder house, a room that so much traumatic shit has happened in. That is so fucking scary to me. And I think that is kind of the crux of the mythology around it. Because, you know, especially now and in, in, in Los Angeles and maybe the town or the city or wherever you live, mm-hmm. the want for people to just destroy something and put something up. Yeah. You know, which sometimes it's understandable. Sometimes it's not financially viable, or you know, the 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 infrastructure isn't up to date or code. But for a house to, for pretty much the better part of fifty years, mm-hmm. stay the way it is, yeah. especially in Los Angeles, and and you know, now is a maybe even a different time. There's like kind of rampant kind of destruction of things, but it's a testament to the story mm-hmm. that it has been preserved for so long. But I'm just going to give a little quick. For people that aren't familiar with this, they don't remember our episode two, which I listened to the first episode, oh my and God, I'm I actually so I actually re edited it because oh, it was so painful God. to listen to. Thank God, mainly because of me, because I'm the one who's doing a lot of the talking, not giving a ton of information, and you know, people. I I, I was actually gonna take our old episodes and just ar- archive them, but then you know what I realized was like we're just gonna have to live with it. You know, we're just going to have to live we with We are shame. a time capsule. Yeah, we are a time capsule. Imperfect. So. And some people are like, you haven't improved. What are you talking about? Yeah, they're like, same old shit. Yeah. And you're right, maybe, in it's, some ways. But, I you talk know, a little slower. I <laughs> don't talk as much about myself. But I swear as much, I think. That hasn't changed. No, that has not changed. I don't think anybody wants it to change. <laughs> so we're going to go to 2475 Glendower. In Los Feliz at about 4.30 to 5 a.m. December 6th, 1959. Cardiologist Harold Perelson lived with his wife, Lillian, three kids. And he brutally murdered his wife, attempted to murder his daughter, and then committed suicide. So he takes a ball-peen hammer, small hammer. Mm. He bashes his wife, Lillian's head Mm. in, kills her, goes to... His daughter Judy's room Ugh. hits her, but it wakes her up. So the blow to her head, uh, a ball peen hammer is pretty small. Waking, waking up, up yeah. to a ball peen hammer, hammer hitting you in the head and, ju- and then looking up and seeing your father. Ugh. Yeah. Because you know, I also think about it, it's like sometimes you ever, you know, it's, if it's a dream you wake up and things seem so real. You're in such uh-huh. a strange arrested state that you don't know what is real. And it'd be very easy for her father, like he did, to be like, hey, calm down chill uh everything's fine but she knew she she woke up in a panic and i think she saw her mother and then ran out of the house screaming for the neighbors and the neighbors could could hear saying like you don't kill me don't kill us and 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 it's got to be very strange so i looking back on this i kind of wondered you know uh, i was you know listening to some other true crime based things or just crime stuff in general and sometimes it's you know you you start by killing one person, and then mm-hmm. somebody else sees us. You have to kill the next person. And yeah. then when does that end? And I wonder what the story would be is if Judy didn't get up. Would he – because obviously he didn't kill Judy because she'd be a witness to what he did. Yeah. He could have weaved any kind of story he wanted to, but I think it was – the goal was to 
be done with this family. So if Judy didn't get up and run screaming out of the house, he would he have just turned around, killed her, and then killed the other two kids? That mm-hmm. probably is what probably. would happen. So she, you know, it's it's super traumatic and is you know somewhat of a yeah. There's a, a word a for hero. That. If, yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of studies around. It's not patricide. It's not familiacide. But it's like a word kind of like that where um, the a family head systematically murders the family and then kills himself. Um, and there's a lot of studies around like why that happens. It's a, it's not wholly an American phenomenon, but a lot of it happens in America and how it deals with like, you know, uh, men and family roles and ego and providership and just a lot of like ingrained dynamics. But certainly, I mean, like obviously this guy wanted to kill his family and die. And he also just from my recollection, um, he was he was a pretty i mean surprised to no one very unstable and dealt with his own uh mental illnesses etc i also wonder now let's just say he he successfully killed his whole family mm-hmm. would he have necessarily killed himself or could he have just weaved some story mm-hmm. hey listen i'm a doc- i'm a doctor yeah what do you like somebody came in here and tried to rob us. I'm living in this nice house up in the hills Mm -hmm. and they killed my whole family. I just got home. I I can't, you know, be in the mind of him or or what happened. But I also, I I saw that that he had a copy of uh, Dante's Inferno. The comedy? Yeah, Divine Comedy. Divine, Divine Comedy. We're all spending lots of time at home watching TV, making sourdough starters, doing some light math. Okay, maybe not so much the light math, but we have a lot more free time on our hands. And you know what they say about idle hands? Here's an idea. Why not keep yourself occupied with some entertainment provided by my friends, your friends, Adam and Eve? I've been a huge fan of them for years. They have thousands of unique product selections from vibrators to sexy toys to lube. Honestly, whatever your little at-home heart desires. As the folks at Adam and Eve say, the best part of staying at home is playing at home. I agree. And I know, too, sex toys are expensive. But I'll say this. Take advantage of all of this delicious free time by choosing almost any one item at 50% off. When you buy from Adam and Eve, you'll also get 10 free boredom-busting gifts, including six spicy movies, a three-piece bonus kit, free shipping delivered discreetly right to your door. I love it. Adam and Eve has thousands of products to sexify your life at home. Sexify? Is that a word? It is now. And you can shop for home with something, you know, more fun than pants. Do you really need more pants? Where are you going? Shopping from home is great, but shopping for sex toys is even better. So don't spend another boring day at home without a new fun product from Adam and Eve's massive online collection. Go to adamandeve.com and use the offer code TOWN to bring home unlimited fun. That's A-D-A-M-E-V-E dot com and use the offer code town at checkout opened on his nightstand the night that it happened Oof. very strange yeah. very very eerie and he had you know issues like you said with mm-hmm. me, you know mental issues and, and psychological issues but also issues financially which yeah which again i think a lot of the times too and i, I think i keep thinking about the unsolved mysteries uh episode two that we we covered a couple of them not this one in particular but about how that underlies a lot of uh, masculinity and providership with a lot of men and when they do kill their families which again I, that word is on the tip of my tongue but i'm not sure what it is a lot of it is like inability to provide you know financial dire straits like money being tied to selfhood and just being able to be the patriarch of the family and not being able to do that anymore and who are you if you can't provide Exactly. You know, like, and what the, are you worth? the fact that nobody else in the family has any say in their fate just contributes to this like egomaniacal ideal of providership and fatherhood. He got screwed out of a business deal with a partner with some kind of medical device. So he lost a lot of money on that. Mm-hmm. Judy got into a car accident with the other kids, not her fault, on Vermont and Los Feliz. So we oh, know the bottom of the hill. Yeah, that's still a pretty hopping area. Remember that address because it'll come up later. Ooh, okay. It's a little, little foreshadowing. Oh, boy. You know, it was not her fault. So they recouped some cost of maybe the medical, but they couldn't recoup the cost of the car. So it was a lot of mm-hmm. financial things probably happening. Uh, he was, you know, somewhat sort of ill. And you find out, you know, he, you find out he had a lot of coronaries. Mm-hmm. And the reason he had them is because he had tried to commit suicide previously a couple of times Mm -hmm. 
So after, you know, Judy's out of the house running, screaming, neighbors, you know, from being there. And, you know, yeah. I, I I don't know how, how dense it was, but it's it's in a cul-de-sac, which is kind of scary in itself because it yeah. kind of blocks off. But there's houses there. There are. There's also, there's a lot of trees. It's really private. Surprisingly private. It's right nestled into Griffith Park. It's a really old part of town. And that is scary, too, because I think in a lot of ways you couldn't hear like she was lucky that she was heard as she screamed and ran out of the house so when judy's other siblings woke up her father harold perelson said go back to bed this is a nightmare and then he took two doses of nembutal Nembutal. and then 31 small white pills codeine tranquilizers and was dead before the ambulances arrived Pretty good way to go, though, if you were to choose. I guess he's a doctor, so he would know that. Yeah, I wonder if you, if there's the stresses of being a doctor in the late 50s. I know like mm-hmm. there's high suicide rates with dentists. I don't know if that's changed. Interesting. Yeah, I, that's what I believe. For some reason, dentists have know. a high rate of suicide from what I remember. I, I don't know why, but um, there's um, a case for that. Sticking your hands in people's mouths all day. I, I, in my mind, if you're a, do- if you're a white man doctor in the fifties, you're God, <laughs> like you can do whatever you want. But you know? not, not if you've made some bad decisions. Yes. Maybe business. Business is yeah, you know, yeah. not going well. I mean, true, true, true. I always think the 1950s is like economy wise, things are booming, but maybe in the you know, late fifties, you go to the sixties, times are changing. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's more, Better doctors, more doctors, more competition. Well, certainly better doctors than this guy. He, he prescribed, you know, a cigarette for breakfast, a cigarette for lunch, mm-hmm. and a nice Six sensible, for dinner. And a nice sensible <laughs> cigarette. Would you love that? You'd I love that. actually would be very into that diet. I, I've been smoking a lot lately, admittedly, and it's uh, not good. It's not good for my health, surprisingly. That's what we found Crazy. out. Crazy. Thank you. You heard it here from Modern me. medicine. You heard it from our, us. Oh, we are very brave speaking the controversial truths. We've never heard from Judy or the kids. I believe it, one of the aunts took care of the other two kids. And there is a letter that previous to this that Judy wrote to her aunt says, quote, my family are on a merry-go-round again. Same problems, same worries, only tenfold. My parents, so to speak, are in a bind financially. So it's been probably weighing pretty heavy. Yeah, God, my parents, so to speak, like they're barely her parents. That's so dark. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I don't know if she's, you know, she's 18, I think, like a pretty probably. Moody teen. Yeah. Or, you know, like anybody any at that age. Yeah. So for the better part of 50 years, the house was untouched. In 1960, the house sold in an auction to Emily and Julian Enriquez. Now, what the house is famous for are these photos, Mm -hmm. Christmas tree, Mm -hmm. unopened presents, magazines, food. And from what I gather, there's people that supposedly rented the house because the Enriquez's, 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 lots of S's and Z's. They never actually moved in there. They just yes, bought they just the bought house, it. maybe at a steal. Yeah. You know, a, I mean, how much does a murder house go for? Either a lot or very little. Well, for right now, the house goes for $2.5 million, I looked up. Ooh, is that more or less than the Home Alone house? No. Oh. I don't know. What the? It might be more. Is that more. in Chicago? Yeah. It's, it's a big house in a Chicago suburb. But I think... Yeah. All right. That says something to me. Yeah, that it's, says it's, something to me. And, you know, some people said, well, it couldn't be the, the Perelson's house because they were Jewish. Why would they have a Christmas tree? But I was like, mm-hmm. I know plenty of Jewish people that still have a Christmas tree. Yeah. It's a cultural that yeah, that holiday does, thing. I don't think that means much, to be honest. Unless you're, I mean, unless you have you're my parents. Orthodox or something. Or yeah. are they, are they, my parents, kind of- if you had a Christmas tree in my parents' house, they would throw you out. Okay. So. Um, I think, well, that's because my mom's first husband, which we didn't know about till I was in my 20s. Um, different story for a different podcast, but her, she, I always ask her why they got divorced and they got divorced when she was 27, 28. Um, she was like, he wanted, he was a Jewish doctor too. Uh Oh, she was like, he wanted a Christmas tree 
over Christmas and she could not, I mean, her dad is a, my grandfather's a Holocaust survivor. He's an immigrant. So like, I get how that hits home, but that's an interesting thing with the cultural divide between Jews, my parents and, and other parents, maybe these, maybe these people. They could, I mean, you know, you don't know the, the level, but the, and, and some things are, you know, there's, you could see magazines that are dated in, you know, after 1959. Uh-huh. So what is actually the Perelsons or not is, is a, you know, kind of a for a debate based on yeah. these photos. That's what some people say. We don't know. And also there's a rumor that these people that rented it on the anniversary mm-hmm. of the attack, that's when they f- essentially found out. It's like, P.S., you live in the Los Feliz murder house. When do you drop that info on someone? I don't know. They did. Wait until they moved <laughs> in. They literally like? ab- abandoned the house. They were like, we're, we're gone. We're out of here. And that's what was left behind. Maybe. I mean. Don't know. That makes sense to me, too. All, all of this seems pretty plausible as to why it's so preserved. It's still terrifying. I, whatever reason it is, it still terrifies me. Rudy Enriquez, their son, he inherited the house, but he did not move in. And according to the LA Times in 2009, I don't know that I want to live there or even stay there, Enriquez told them. And he died in 2015. He had no children, so there was no one to pass it along to. And as of 2016... It was back on the market, and as far mm-hmm. as I know, and as far as what I've seen, it is still on the market. Yeah. According to, I mean, I you know I'm not versed in looking up Zillow, but it seems like it is on the market, and I've seen records that the price was three point five million. I looked, and I don't know how accurate it is. It says two point five million. It seems like a really good price. Yeah, for, for the size of the house. Cool. So I can't believe some murder person, murder person, some. In, true crime enthusiast or like Trent Reznor, yeah, has Marilyn like, Manson, yeah, exactly. That's right. Actually, it should be like it should be a celebrity, like a kind of a gothy celebrity should get it. I believe now this kind of crosses crosses worlds that that Stasi Schroeder from Vanderpump Rules maybe wanted to buy that house hmm. when I was kind of looking things up, and I believe this is the house she was talking about is that she wanted to get married there, live there. I don't know whatever it yeah. is. Um, and okay, I, yeah, I think okay. I believe that she that seems like her thing. That's definitely her thing. I mean, she eventually moved into a house in the hills that had I don't think any haunted history to it, but it had beautiful granite countertops. Um, as it should, as it should. I don't. I, I think again, it's like, do you really want this? Do you really? And I know Stasi really leans into the whole sure. like macabre shit, but like, it's kind of like why. You know, like, I hesitate to look up the place that I live in's own history. I'm like, what am I going to find? Yeah. You know, you don't want to could around. be We could be sitting in a murder house right now. We probably are. If someone didn't die here, I'd be surprised. Yeah. But I'm not looking into it right now. Times are too tough. <laughs> I went to that. I was like, you know mm-hmm. what? I, I want to do this episode, but I, you know, want to bring some, Something to some new dynamic. I was like, let yeah. me go to where it all started. Mm-hmm. And it is very narrow. You know, mm-hmm. driving, like if there's like a, you know, there's things where like, there's a party in the hills, it's a nightmare. Yeah. It's very narrow. You can't fit two cars side by side. Yeah. There's nowhere to turn around. So I, I've, you know, I go up there. It's a, it's a pretty, uh, overcast day. So it's a little mm-hmm. weird, but nothing, you know, nothing to write home about, as they say. Mm-hmm. I get up there and I see the house and it, the facade is as it was. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of barbed wire. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a Century 21 sign. So it is for sale. Mm-hmm. And the inside, as I know and as current as I see, is is pretty much gutted. Mm-hmm. So the inside is absolutely gutted. The outside seems to be pretty well preserved. It looks as it did. And, you know, to get up there... So I was wondering, like, did you have to, did you go, did you have to climb anything? Because there's we, like. Okay. So here's what happened with it. So th- that's the same experience that I had where it was like inside was gutted, outside looked great. Um, there was a gate. Was there a gate when you went there? There's a gate that seemed pretty well sealed shut. Oh, see, when I went, the gate was not shut. There was a single rock holding the gate in. Oh, no, no. This was pretty. <laughs> I mean, there's it's so we just barbed went wire. In the gate. It's like a fortress. Yeah. Probably because of people like you and us mm-hmm. talking about it. Maybe. <laughs> and you went up we went up to the house, the house yeah. yeah yeah which i i mean i don't know if i wouldn't have done it probably during the day i mean i'd probably have to yeah it was pretty it was pretty creepy we had a, some alcohol within us to help with the courage to do that um i have some pictures that i'll dig up for sure it was very very creepy um 
But yeah, the gate was totally open. Yeah, this is just pretty, you know, you can see photos on her Instagram or mm-hmm. you know, post them on Patreon and, and such. Mm. I got a lot of photos. Now I wanted some video. Okay. So the process of me getting video is that I'm, the way I was parked, I can just roll down mm-hmm. the window because I didn't want to get out, take up space, be mm-hmm. intrusive. I wasn't really looking to make a huge scene. I just wanted to capture some video and some photos. So mm-hmm. I go to roll down the window of my car, the electronic windows, mm-hmm. and it will not roll down. All the other ones, I'm unlocking, locking. Everyone else is fine. I'm like, this window does not want to move. Hmm. Whatever. Whatever. I don't know what the problem is. No big deal. Open the door. I have to get out. Go to – with my iPhone, my modern iPhone sure. to take some video. Camera will not press play. Whoa. It's weird because I have a lot of dreams sometimes that I want to take a picture or video or something and it mm-hmm. won't work. Yeah. And that's probably a common – it's like, you know, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, in school in my underwear or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it just will not work. So I'm like clearing it out. Eventually I have to start, like restart my phone. It works for like two or three seconds so you're just and like stops. sitting in the dark. It, you're sitting in the dark messing with your window and your phone. No, no, no. It's during the day. Okay. It's sorry. during the day. It's not that, you know, because I don't think I would be able to see yeah. capture anything. So it's during the day. Okay. It's, it's probably like 1 p.m. Okay. A pretty innocuous time. It's mm-hmm. not the witching hour or anything like no, that. No, no, no. The video will play two or three seconds and I'm like, what is, I'm getting really frustrated. Mm-hmm. And then a maintenance worker, because his truck was there, he comes out and he goes to me. He's like, this house. And then he shows his arm like as if he's got goosebumps and he goes, Brr, and then walks away. God damn it. Yeah. So then the camera works. Oh, So I'm videoing. <laughs> I get about 30 seconds of video just to show what it looks like, what it might be like to live there, the street. <sighs> And then I get out of there. Yeah. Turn the car around. And I'm really upset about the window. I was like, I don't want to get this fixed. As soon as I hit Vermont and Los Feliz, remember I said, remember that when the accident happened, the window just goes down. Wow. That is terrifying. Also, Vermont and Los Feliz is maybe like three blocks, four blocks from it, right? Yeah. It's it's it's, it's pretty essentially the bottom of the hill. Yeah. If you Um, roll down the hill from the house, that's where you would hit. Yeah. That is so creepy. Oh my god! Um, I don't like that. Yeah, so that I don't like that, that one bit that is uh, what happened. Mm-mm. So you, you got to realize you don't need to go there at night and have like a a drunk no double blind date there. You need to go there at one p.m. You got to go when it's you're a total square like me who doesn't want to bother anybody. <laughs> you know, you you see you that's you, the time you're tempting I, I'm fate. Too thirsty. I'm too thirsty for all this. I go on Halloween. I go at night. Like how fucking basic yeah. could I be? You got to go Tuesday go during lunchtime. P- yeah, one p.m. lunchtime Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, full stomach, totally sober. Nope, intermittent <laughs> fasting, very empty stomach. I never eat. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 